Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and we're back with another episode! Seriously, when are we gonna take a week off? Who knows at this point? Since everybody loved the AEW figure review last week so much, I figure I'd keep it up with another wrestling figure review! Alright, what, what's it gonna be, Gorilla? Jack Specific? Hell no! Hasbro? Not yet! Are you finally finishing LJN? I am never finishing LJN! Well, then who the hell is it gonna be? Sumo Giants by Arco from 1986! Arco? Did they come free with a fill-up at AM, PM? I don't think so, Jess. But they are pretty much in scale with the WWF, LJN Wrestling Superstars, so why not? Well, at least it's not Mego. Raz Holly, hit the music! Smack dab in the middle of one of the last great decades. Well, period. Music, movies, TV, sports, video games, and let's not forget action figures, the 80s were firing on all cylinders. Is that nostalgia talking? Probably. Disagree with me? Make your own fucking video and tell me how awesome 2000 to 2010 was, you dopey fuck. It'll probably get more views than this, but you'll still be wrong. Anyway, even though I grew up in the 80s and am familiar with tons of toy lines from the time period, every once in a while something pops up that was off my radar. Enter Sumo Giants. Someone posted a pic of one of these online. I saw it and was immediately intrigued. You have these large, heavy figures roughly the size of LJN wrestling superstars, and apparently they were moderately popular. I immediately set out to learn more. Arco Toys, who were acquired by Mattel in 1986, were probably most well known for making Barbie accessories, released Sumo Giants in the very same year Mattel acquired it. I'm not sure if these were something that was in the works prior to the Mattel takeover, or something that was directed by the house that Barbie built. It doesn't really fucking matter, as what really does matter is that these figures are big, solid, awesome looking sumo champions ready to be set loose in a ring near you in 1986. Three sumo giants were released. They share a common body, but all have different paint applications, accessories, and head sculpts. And these aren't just generic, rotund, greasy grapplers. Each sumo giant has a unique name and backstory. There's Komosubi, Jack the Crusher, Yokozuna, the Beast, and Ozeki, the Butcher. I got all three of these, so let's check them out. Okay, let's start out with uh, Komosubi, Jack the Crusher. I don't know why. We gave them a Japanese name and a uh, an English nickname, but whatever. Um, it, it's it's still kind of cool looking. And check this out. On the you can tell on the package, you've got this very cool looking background here. We have the big rising sun. We have some awesome artwork of a couple of sumo warriors duking it out in the sumo ring. Um, we have a uh, what I'm assuming is Japanese. Uh, uh, letters here at the top. I don't know what it says. It could say anything really, but I know it says fully articulated arms, legs, and head move. I mean, I guess that's fully articulated. For 1986, is that fully articulated? I don't know. You can tell kind of by looking in the package that he does have that five point articulation, not unlike a Star Wars figure, um, but much bigger and much cooler looking. Um, sumo Giants, wrestling champions of Japan. 
On the top here, we have Arco, recommended for children over three years. We don't have a lot of legal mumbo jumbo. Here at the bottom, 1986, Arco Industries Limited. Westbury, New York, 11590, made in British Crown Colony of Hong Kong. Um, as we turn to the back, um, we have a lot of text on the back here. No real uh, file card, but we do have a biography for the character and like a little blurb about the character. So look at all this text. We're going to go over it because I'm opening this fucking package. So um, this will be the last time I get to take a look at it uh, before it's destroyed. Um, so across the top, we have Sumo Giants, Wrestling Champions of Japan with the... Um, uh, unreadable Japanese kanji. Who knows what that might be? Uh, sumo, Japanese wrestling, the mysterious, the elusive, the most exciting sport of Japan. Two players compete in a 15 foot ring. The wrestler who succeeds in pushing the other out of the ring or is able to force him to touch ground with any part of his body, I guess except his feet, is the winner and has complete victory over their opponent. I that's that sounds a little, little kinky in order to make it more difficult for his opponent the sumo has to put on as much weight as possible hoping to become a real giant all right all right i, I get it on the on the bottom here we do have the collect them all um with the uh, little sumo ring that'd be dope if like you know it came with a little rope or something just a little Rope, like how fucking hard would that have been? Like that would actually have been an easy play set or an easy accessory for these. But regardless, you can tell in the picture here, he's got a little bit better of a paint job, a little bit more detail uh, on the actual figure. We don't have the uh, the makeup. Um, he has the green, uh, the other ones are blue and red. But let's uh, take a look at his biography here. Uh, Komasubi, Jack the Crusher. The fact that Jack the Crusher, Komasubi, is one of the most hated men in wrestling has not stopped him from winning a 24-man battle royal early in this year. So I guess he's a professional wrestler too. It seems remarkable that Jack the Crusher, Komasubi, could ever be beat. Already legendary, he has remained one of Japan's fiercest challengers. The Crusher is nothing short of awe-inspiring. A truly incredible sumo superstar. Um, and then a brief biography, Komasubi, sumo wrestling's class three champion, hails from Japan's auto factories where he worked with molten steel, transforming it into long ribbons of auto window trim. Not a particularly interesting job, but he worked hard and earnestly making his window trim the best in all the world. Working day after day, hauling huge 500-pound cauldrons of molten steel, which would actually be measured in um, kilos in, in Japan, Komasubi, nicknamed Jack, soon became quite strong. With each passing day, the cauldrons seemed to be getting lighter and lighter. Soon, Komasubi could carry two cauldrons. This is getting unbelievable. One in each hand. That's very strong indeed. One day, a terrible thing happened at the factory. Flashing red lights and buzzers signaled trouble on the assembly line. Production had stopped. Komasubi waddled to where the trouble was. The car lifter machine had broken. I can see where this is going. Komasubi's strength was apparent to all when he started lifting the cars up himself. He lifted the entire day's production of subcompact cars so that the tires could be installed. Komasubi's strength did not go unnoticed. Sumo Giants Wrestling Federation signed him up with a three-year contract. Car wind that's very specific. Car window craftsman, car lifter, and champion sumo, Komasubi, has truly become Jack of all trades. Um, and at the bottom here, we have our Sumo Giants Wrestling Federation um, ID card um, with uh, Komasubi on the, on the picture. And you put your name and your address and and uh, there you go. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, th there he is. Um, let's move on to the next one. Okay, our second greasy grappler is uh, <laughs> Yokozuna, the beast. Um, 
Yeah, he is in blue, and you can see the blue background. Um, we still have the rising sun and the awesome illustration of the uh, sumos grappling for control. He has a blue uh, gear set up here. Um, it's a little different, a little accessory is different, and his, uh, his head sculpt is different. Um, the bodies are all the same, but the paint jobs are different. Um, and then we have the, the pretty much the same shit on the, on the front of the box, but as we turn it over onto the back, We've got a couple of different things. We've got the blurb and the biography. Um, we still have the, the Sumo Giants Wrestling Federation ID card, uh, complete with a photo uh, of Yokozuna the Beast right there. So um, you can collect them all. Uh, it's kind of like a file card, just sort of uh, spread all over the back of this fucking box. Not a lot of legal mumbo jumbo at all. Um, I, I think it's ages three and up or something like that. Yeah, children over three years. Um, and, and these things are fucking huge. Um, I can't wait to get them out of the box. But before we do that, let's take a look at Yokozuna the Beast. The best that wrestling has to offer. Busting heads at seven foot eight, 525 pounds. That's fucking impossible. Yokozuna the Beast with his physical size, his mental discipline, and devotion to daily training has won the title of most popular sumo of the year. I, this is the, the good guy, babyface sumo wrestler. This vicious, bloodthirsty animal thrives on destruction in the ring, except he's very popular. Uh, born on a famous mountain top in Fuji, Japan. Was he born on top of Mount Fuji? Um, that's a, that would be a famous mountaintop in Fuji, I guess. Yokozuna, Sumo's grand champion wrestler, was very poor. As a boy, Yokozuna, the beast, dreamed of becoming a baseball player. Not having very much money, his family could not afford a television, a radio, or even a newspaper so that Yokozuna could never learn just what baseball was. Well, I guess it wasn't really like that big of a dream if he didn't even really fucking know Moving on. He had heard that baseball was a famous game about throwing balls around. <laughs> Yokozuna thought that he was what thought that was a wonderful thing to do. Poor Yokozuna had no baseballs, but Fuji Mountain did have rocks. Yokozuna threw rocks with all his might day after day, year after year. As he got older, rocks became boulders. At 18 years of age, Yokozuna was throwing 300 pound boulders over the mountainside. Tourists were soon puzzled with all those rocks coming down. An expedition was formed to see what caused this phenomenon. They found Yokozuna a huge but bored bulging wall of muscle. Take me away from this ball game, he cried. <laughs> That's fucking rad. Uh, I, I feel bad about opening these up because this package is fucking fantastic. And so they did. The rest is history. Yokozuna signed up with the Sumo Giants Wrestling Federation where he soon became Grand Champion, which is what um, Yokozuna means. Yeah, guys, he was born to be the Grand Champion. And, uh, and as you can see, take me away from this ball game, says the Beast. Um, <laughs> let's move on. Okay, and finally, we have Ozeki the Butcher. I am hope I am saying that right. O-H-Z-E-K-I, the Butcher. Um, and he is in red, and we have the, the uh, raspberry red background with the rising sun. We also have our, our sumo grapplers to the side here. Pretty much the same opening in the box, but at the top here, we have a, a couple of Caldor stickers. Our East Coast uh, viewers will remember Caldor as a department store back in the day. I don't know if they're still around. Um, go ahead and tell me in the comments uh, if, if there's still Caldor. Or, or what you remember about Caldor. Tell me a fucking interesting story in the comments about Caldor, and maybe I'll share it next time on the Dad Classic Show. Anyway, let's take a look at the back of the box here. Sumo Giants Wrestling of Japan, same old, same old. We got our uh, Sumo Giants Wrestling Federation ID card with Ozeki, the butcher, uh, pictured on the back. Now, I would have figured just by name alone that this would have been the big bad guy, but we're going to find out. We're going to find out because we're going to read uh, the little blurb and his biography, uh, his, his basically his file card. Um, so let's take a look here. Ozeki the Butcher. 
an awesome power in Japan. Ozeki stands six foot eleven and weighs four hundred and eighty pounds. He's like the fucking cruiserweight of the of the of the wrestling federation here. He's he's small. He's smaller than the, the other two motherfuckers apparently, but they got the same mold, so they're all the same size. Anyway. His physique is characterized by layer upon layer of pure muscle. Okay. Anyway, um, a star so explosive that he ch has changed the face of professional wrestling over the past year with many unusual and offbeat battling stunts. This guy does fucking moonsaults, fucking 450 splash, he's doing shooting star presses, fucking corkscrews, tope con hilo. All right, few people have ever leave a match, few people ever leave a match of, of this sumo disappointed. This is the high flyer luchador sumo. Um, that's why he's so small at 480 pounds. <laughs> Ozeki the Butcher, sumo wrestling's class two champion, was born in Kobe, Japan. Tradition being tradition, Ozeki followed in his father's footsteps. Ozeki's father m massaged the beef cattle of Kobe, making their meat soft and tender. It was hard work, but it made a man strong. Massaging that meat. Ozeki was no exception. Even as a boy, his muscles would glisten in the sun. As Is it getting hot in here? <laughs> as he pounded and massaged the Kobe beef, his father was very proud of Ozeki. They worked together. His father massaged the right side of the beef, and Ozeki massaged the left. This is actually what it fucking says on the box. Early one day, one of the beef cattle fell down on top of Ozeki's father, pinning him to the floor. Ozeki raced to his father's aid. Suddenly, Ozeki heard a great roar. The room was filled with cheering people. Ozeki opened his eyes. He himself couldn't believe it. Up over his head, he held the bull. Wow. Fucking like, like the Incredible Hulk with the with the fucking with the the lady fucking picks up the car. Anyway, over two thousand pounds of raging bull held aloft by one young man. Ozeki tossed the bull and hugged his father. There, there's a, a fun one for our overseas fans too. He tossed the bull. With that strength, my son, you should become a sumo," said Ozeki's father, and so he did. His father arranged an interview with the Sumo Giants Wrestling Federation. After a brief training period, he won his first bout and has continued to win all 20 bouts, making him undefeated champion. Never again did Ozeki have to massage or even throw the ball again. <laughs> Come on! Come on, that one! That one was almost obvious! My God! All right! I know we want to see these things get open. I got all three of these bad boys and we're going to open them up right now um, in this uh, special opening ceremony of, of opening figures. I'll open them in the order in which I introduced them. Here we go. So let's take a look at these fuckers out of the box. Let's start with Komasubi, where we started before. Um, now, I don't know if the camera's picking this up. On his uh, little um, accessory, I don't know what to call this thing. It's like a belt with a skirt on the front of it um, that covers the... Uh... Oh my goodness. I have not looked at the back yet. Um, so there's the back. That's what he looks like on the rear end. Um, but this has actually got a very nice little uh, texture to it and um, some nice designs on it. We don't see any of the, the makeup or, or, or extra uh, uh, accouchement, if you will, on these figures. But they do have the five points of articulation. I thought maybe they had a waist too. But nope, it's the five points of articulation. Arms, legs, and head all um, articulated. They, they basically do one fucking pose. But uh, but they're cool. I mean, they're, they're fucking really dope. But let's take a look at the rest of them here. Um, second up, uh, what was this fucking... Yokozuna! Yokozuna the Beast! The Beast! He's got his little uh, fringy... Fucking uh, get up here, of course, on the back, you have his giant ass. Um, there's like a gap on the head here. Um, 
Nothing wrong though. Uh, yeah, he looks all right. And these things, oh god damn it, they're massive. <laughs> fucking love these things. And they're solid too. I feel like I could fucking just like beat the shit out of somebody with one of these things. They're fucking great, dude. These things are so awesome. <laughs> I'm so glad I opened these up. Um, it look like the, the the expressions on the faces are great. He has more of like a solemn uh, expression to him. The beast Yokozuna does. He's like the you know, remember he was tossing rocks. He's like baseball, take me away or or some shit. And then uh, fucking oh man, and look at Komasubi. Like I love it. These old school expressions on these figures. A lot of times nowadays they really can't get expressions on action figures to look like this. What the fuck? I mean, this is nearly 40 years ago. 1986, um, where, you know, in, in a few years, we'll be closing in on 40 on this thing. It's 30... I'm less than 34 years old, I guess? Math is hard. Anyway, um, yeah, 34 fucking years ago, look at the great expressions on a toy company that was just acquired by Mattel. So I, I'm thinking they probably had these things in the mix before Mattel ever, you know, jumped in. And these things were a little toy company, a who gives a shit toy company, the paint applications, the sculpts, the expressions on the faces. Let's look at Ozeki. He has this uh, interesting thing here. It's like a big rope. And then uh, we have these hanging down gimmicks. Um, there's his giant ass. Um, th there he is, Ozeki, the, the fucking high flyer. The guy that does the moonsaults and shit. Look, you can tell. Fucking, he's a wall of muscle or some shit. <laughs> hey, uh, ironically, he's got the fattest face. Look at that. Look, mm, mm, mm so all in all these are great great action figures um i'm so glad that i discovered them and uh, found out what they were and i got i jumped on it as soon as i found out what these were i was immediately online looking for carded fucking figures um because some of the ones that i was i was seeing that were for sale that were loose were kind of shitty looking um, but these are brand new brand new out of the box and I'm so glad, so fucking glad that I picked these up. The detail is actually very, very good for figures from this time period and for as big as they are. I love these fucking figures. These are awesome. I'm so glad that I bought them. Uh, tell me in the comments what you think of these things. Did you, did you have these growing up? Did you know about them? Uh, well, you know, what do you think about them? Are you gonna look for them right now? Go ahead and let us know. Well, that's it for Sumo Giants. Did you know about these? Did you grow up with these? Did you have them? Now can we have a week off? Probably not, because we've got lots more figures to cover. Well, at least we're done with Mego. No, we're not. Damn it. Well, at least we won't see any more goddamn bendies. Funny you mentioned that. Oh, come on. Anyway, we'll see you next time on the Dan Classic Show. Raz Holly, hit the music.